Have you ever wondered, how do I assign materials in Houdini? Really? I'm kidding, of course. Now, when I first started using Houdini, assigning a single material to a single object was straightforward enough. However, as I started to want to do something a little more complicated, it kind of got challenging, and I had to uh, do a lot of research just to kind of figure out the basics. So I thought I would tackle this topic in this tutorial. Now, just to be clear, this is not about creating material. We're not going to be doing, you know, shader development and uh, look dev and stuff like that. This is strictly about how to properly assign different materials to the same object or different materials to different objects and so on and so forth. So on that note, let's dive in. All right, let's try this again. I said let's try this again because I already videoed this entire tutorial once before, but since this is the first time I'm using OBS and obviously I had like some weird settings on my first time around, my mouse and my drop down menus weren't showing up. So hopefully uh, now everything works properly and you guys can actually see what the hell I'm doing. Anyway, uh, this is my Houdini scene. It's pretty straightforward. I have three spheres here and um, I have a camera and just a general environment light with like a general HDRI just to have some light. Um, inside my geometry node, I have left sphere, center sphere and right sphere and uh, two transform nodes for the side spheres just to kind of put them on the side. And then a merge node here just so that we can see all three of the spheres together. Uh, what else have we got? In my material context, mapped network, I built some shaders, some basic shaders, red, green, blue, yellow, and then a displacement shader that we're going to use a little bit later on. Now, um, I am using 3D Light as my rendering engine, uh, but what you need to know is that what I'm about to tell you applies to any render that you're using. So whether you're using Redshift, whether you're using Arnold, whether you're using Mantra, um, this all applies to those renders as well. So. All right, so let's do something. Let's say that we just want to assign just a simple shader to these three spheres, to this geometry node, okay? So like the very basic, simplest way that you would go about doing that, you highlight the geometry, you go under the render tab here, and here you have a space for the material. All you have to do is click on this gizmo right here, and say we want to choose the red shader. I'm going to click accept, and what I'm going to do here on my screen, I'm going to pull up my IPR. This is the 3D light IPR that you should be able to see right now. So. Here we are, we have a red shader mapped to all three of my spheres. Okay, so the next way that you can assign a material in Houdini is that you can actually go inside your uh, geometry and um, basically add a material node, okay? So um, we are at the so-called SOP level in Houdini and Houdini gives us a material node that we can also use to assign materials. Just as an example, I'm just going to assign a different material here to all three of these spheres. Um, I'm just going to choose yellow, okay? And I need to hit refresh on my IPR. And now you'll see that all three spheres are yellow. And the reason why is because whatever we have here in the SOP context overrides whatever we have over in the basic OBJ context, okay? So whatever uh, material you have assigned here, if you have a material node inside your object, then that material node overrides whatever you have set up out here. So that's important to know because sometimes you might actually uh, be changing materials out here and you're kind of wondering why are they not showing up? Well, there's a pretty good chance that you might have actually a material node somewhere inside your geometry, somewhere around here. So, uh, you know, something to know. Anyway, let's get rid of this guy right here, because what we want to do is we want to assign different colors to each one of these spheres. So the first simple way to do it is to actually add three material nodes, but we want to add them before the merge, right? Because the merge is kind of bringing all three of them together. So when we added a material after the merge, obviously it applied that same material to all three spheres once again. But in this particular case, let's create three material nodes here. So let's call this one blue. Let's call yellow and let's create a third one and we're going to make this uh, green and we're going to call it green. All right. So this is a simple way to have different materials assigned to um, the same geometry node, but three different objects that you might have in there. So let's go and make the first one blue. So we're just going to point it to my blue shader right here. 
Uh, the middle one, I'm just going to make it yellow. And then the third one, I'm going to make it green. And if I hit refresh, now we'll see that we have three different colors for each one of our spheres. So what if we don't want to use three material nodes? Maybe we just want to use one just for simplicity's sake. What we can do is we can assign each sphere to a group and then we can use the groups to drive our single material node. Let's do that. So I'm just going to create a group node below the first sphere and I'm just going to call this one left. Then I'm just going to drag and copy the group and I'm just going to call this one center and one more group right here and I'm just going to call this one you guessed it right perfect so now after the merge node we're going to add once again a material node okay and now in the material I'm just going to click on this guy to say that I want two more um, assignments so on the first one we're going to select our left group and we're just going to say that we want the blue shader on the left and then we're going to pick the center group and we're going to use the yellow shader and last but not least on our right group we're going to assign the green shader okay so now if i hit refresh on the ipr we'll see that once again we have different colors on each one of the spheres so that's another way that you can tackle this so this method of using a single material node and groups is probably what you're going to want to use whenever you're dealing with some geometry that you purchased online, maybe from TurboSquid or Sketchfab. Let me show you. So let's turn off our spheres right now. And I have brought in this uh, model of BB-8 uh, that I got from uh, Video Copilot, actually. And uh, the nice thing about these models here, let me add a material node, is that typically they come with pre-built groups. So if we uh, click on the drop-down menu here, we'll see that there's like a group for the antenna, for the body, for the head, and for the hatch door. So let's create four different um, sets here of groups. One for the antenna, let's make the antenna, I don't know, let's make it blue. Uh, one for the body, let's make this guy uh, green, then one for the head, let's make it yellow, and last but not least, one for the hatch door, and we're going to make this one red, okay? So if I start my IPR here, we'll see our BB-8 with the different materials assigned. So as I said, when you buy, you know, pre-made geometry, you know, a like model of an airplane or spaceship or what have you, chances are it's going to have groups already pre-assigned for you. So they've done all the hard work for you and all you have to do is just insert one single material node and just, you know, select the appropriate material that you want for whatever the group is. Okay, I'm going to cover one last method so that you guys know absolutely everything that I know about assigning materials in Houdini. And for this last example, I'm just going to turn off the BB-8 and what I've done here is I've created just a simple box, okay? And let's say that I want to assign three different materials to each one of these faces of the box. That's pretty straightforward and we can kind of certainly do it with the groups and, uh, you know, and using like a material node. However, let's say that one of these materials is a displacement material, okay? Now, most third-party renderers like Redshift, 3D Lite, Arnold, have a global setting, like a global tab in here, where you can enable displacement, you can enable, for instance, like if you want to subdivide at render time, and so on and so forth. But what if we don't want to do that? What if we only want to apply, say, displacement and subdivision for one of these materials, but not for the other two? How do we tackle that? So let's switch off the box node, and I'm just going to create a brand new geometry node here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the object merge. Object merge is a really, really handy node that you can use to bring other geometry from, you know, other nodes into this particular node. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on here and I've already created a null with my output of my full cube. So I'm going to click on accept and we can see that our cube comes into this particular node. Except I don't want to bring the whole thing. I just want to bring one of the groups that I've already created. So uh, for this one, let's have uh, the top. Okay, so now it's just bringing the top face. Okay, and we're just gonna call this top. Now we're gonna just alt drag so that I don't have to create everything from scratch. For this one, I'm just gonna 
call it side and I'm just going to jump in here and I'm just going to select our side there we go and then one more time for the bottom alright and go in here get rid of this group and select our bottom group okay cool actually I think I got them backwards but anyway you get the idea here let me hit refresh on the IPR so we see all three faces so now what we have is the ability to assign not only different materials to each one of these uh, groups but we can also have different settings so the top one let's say that I want to go into my main render tab under the main material now we can kind of use that and I'm just gonna click on the displace so now we have a displaced texture at the very top and then on the side I'm just gonna click here and let's make it blue alright and the bottom which is really should be the side it's all reversed let's make that yellow alright cool and let's say the top for displacement maybe I want to subdivide even more so I have a little bit smoother kind of displacement so I can kind of enable that while the other two nodes um, you know they don't need subdivision it's just a simple face or they don't need displacement to be enabled and so on and so forth so this is yet another method that you can use to assign different materials to different parts of your object especially if you want these global render settings to only apply to one portion of your object and not to the entire object. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, there are a hundred different ways of doing the same thing in Houdini, so if you know a better way, please let me know in the comments below because I'm curious. Thank you for watching and see you next time.